Okay, so we're going to look at a uh, couple more examples on dependent, independent events, conditional probability, because I got a couple questions about uh, the last homework assignment. So this is a question that's similar to one of the questions in the homework that some people are having trouble with. So here we're being told there is a collection of 10 movies. Four of the movies star Danny DeVito. We're going to be borrowing two of the movies at the same time, randomly. And now we want to find the probability of a couple different things happening. So the first one is that both movies uh, star Danny DeVito. And if we want to do that, um, first we need to figure out, well, are these independent events or are these dependent events? So since we're borrowing the movies at the same time, this tells us these are dependent events. Okay, so these are dependent events because we're taking both of them out. It's the same as if we were removing one movie and then taking a second movie out without replacement. So you can't possibly get the same movie twice. If it was possible for us to get the same thing two times in a row, um, right, then this could be an independent event, but we're taking one out and then another out, so these are going to be dependent events. right? So this is going to affect how we solve the problem. If both movies star Danny DeVito, this is going to be the probability of the first movie starring DeVito and the second movie starring DeVito. So this is... Okay, so that probability, probability of the first one starring Danny DeVito is going to be 4 out of 10. And then the probability that the second one also stars Danny DeVito, right? So meaning given that the first one also stars him, well, we've removed one movie that has Danny DeVito in it, so now there's only three left. And um, we removed one of the movies, so now there's only nine left. So this multiplies out to give us 12 out of 90. Now, if we want to, want to look at the probability that neither movie stars Danny DeVito, it's pretty much the same thing as what we had here except for looking at the probability the first one doesn't star him and then the second one doesn't star him. So if the first movie doesn't star Danny DeVito, that's a probability of 6 out of 10, right? Because we know four movies, he's in four of the movies, there's 10 movies total, so we would assume he's not in the other six movies. So a probability of him not being in the first movie we pick is 6 out of 10. Probability of him not being in the second movie that we pick is going to be 5 out of 9. We've removed one of the movies, so now there's only nine left, and we removed one of the movies that doesn't have Danny DeVito, so now there's five of them instead of six. And this works out to be 30 over 90. Okay, so those weren't too terrible. They were similar to the examples we did last time. This is the part of the problem that's a little bit different. So here we're looking for the probability that one movie stars DeVito and one does not. So it's not... Uh, one movie stars him and one doesn't. This is actually, even though we see the word end here, this is actually a type of or problem. So there's two ways that this situation can happen. The first movie could star him and the second movie does not. Or he's not in the first movie and he is in the second movie. So that's two different ways this can occur. So you can think of it kind of like um, when we did sample spaces for flipping uh, multiple coins, right? If there were two of them, you can get heads on the first and tails on the second, or you can get tails on the first and heads on the second, and we consider those to be different things, even though you have one tail and one head, right? So this is probability the first stars DeVito, and second... Um, no DeVito, I guess we'll write ND for that, or probability that the first doesn't have DeVito in it and the second does. Okay, so now this we can calculate similarly to what we did over there. So if the first movie stars him, that probability is going to be 4 out of 10, and then the second movie starring him, not starring him, well, there's still all six of him that he's not in are in there, but we only have nine movies left, right? And now we have an or here, so that tells us we're going to have to add these two probabilities together. Probability Danny DeVito's not in the first movie, six out of ten. Probability that he is in the second movie, given he was not in the first, is now going to be four out of nine. 
Okay, so we simplify this and we end up getting uh, 24 out of 90 plus 24 out of 90, which gives us 48 out of 90. And now something else interesting about this is if we go back and think about everything that could possibly happen here, uh, this covers all possible outcomes that could show up in our sample space, right? We could end up getting two movies with Danny DeVito. We could end up getting both movies he's not in. We could have him in the first, but not in the second. Or we could have him not in the first and in the second. So those are all of the four things that could happen. If we add up all of the answers we got, right? So if we do 12 over 90 plus 30 over 90 plus 48 over 90, this adds up to 90 over 90 or one, right? So that tells us one of these three things is guaranteed to happen if we take two of these movies out. Now this example is one that we saw in the other video on sample spaces. The reason that I'm bringing it back now is because you can also treat this as a problem about independent events and you can solve it using the multiplication rule. So, I mean, for part A, yeah, we solved that using a sample space, I mean, not sample space, tree diagram, and that's okay. But if we look at part B, we can figure out probabilities from the information that they give us up here, and we can then use that to find these. So if we're looking for the probability that, you know, they order a lunch at random, they chose the first soup, the second entree, and the first dessert, Right, we got one over 12 here. Another way we could find that is the probability of ordering the first soup is gonna be one half. The probability of ordering the second entree is going to be one third. And the probability of ordering the first dessert is one half. And if we multiply all of these out, we get one over 12. Right, so we can think of these as independent events um, where they are like unrelated or separate categories. Yeah, so even though we don't see the terms uh, like with replacement show up anywhere here, um, and this isn't something, you know, that might reset, like rolling, you know, a die or flipping a coin, this is another situation where, you know, we would consider the events to be independent. So this means, you know, whatever soup we order um, is not going to affect what entree you choose at random, and that's not going to affect whatever dessert you pick. So there's two soups, the probability is getting one is always going to be one half, right? So now if we look at the next one, right, probability of getting the first dessert and the third entree, right? Probability of getting the first dessert we know is one half. And then the probability of getting the third entree is one out of three, right? Now they don't mention anything about any type of soup, so we just assume it doesn't matter, right? There's a 100% chance you're going to get one of the two. Now, if we multiply the probability of getting the first dessert and the third entree together, we get one out of six, right? We had two over 12 here, but that simplifies to one out of six, so this still works. Now, if we go over here, we want to find the probability of ordering the second soup and the second dessert. Okay, so the probability of ordering the second soup um, is one half. The probability of ordering a, uh, the second dessert is also one half because there's only two to choose from. So we multiply these guys together and we get one over four. If we reduce three over 12, we're going to get one over four. So it's the same thing. So if this were a normal semester and I gave you a problem like this on an exam, I would not care which method you use to solve it. If you wanted to solve a problem like this using a tree diagram, you would be welcome to do that. If you wanted to uh, solve this 
type of problem using the multiplication rule and treating them as independent events, uh, you could also choose to do that that way. So if problems like this come up on future homework assignments and you're not given any directions into you know, how you need to solve them, uh, do whichever method you prefer, whichever method you like more, you know, find easier.